All right, everybody, check this out. We have a real blast from the past. This banana yellow Aprilia RSV Miele R. It's a 2002 example of one of the coolest twin cylinder superbikes from way back in the day. Today, we're gonna be doing a full ride and review on this machine and seeing everything about this motorcycle. Let's get into it. So you might be wondering, where did this motorcycle come from? Well, it actually belongs to someone who works right here at Yami Noob. Nico, please make your way onto the stage. So. You guys have probably seen Nico here before. He uh, infamously rode the H2 and nearly pooped himself, uh, which most people do when they ride that bike. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Famously, uh, maybe we can clip that in where you're just like, it was terrifying or whatever yeah. you said, right? Yeah. Uh, so Nico, this is quite the bike. Um, I don't think many people would think that a young man such as yourself would own this machine. This machine's actually older than you are, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, it's older. So how did you get this bike? Tell me the story. So before I started working here, the week before I started my internship, me and my dad were looking for, you know, like a good commuter bike that we could both have fun with. So we thought to get a old Italian race bike. You know, it's reliable. Definitely nothing happened when we got it after the first week when it died. Your dad definitely just like lives vicariously through you in a lot yeah. of ways. He's like, oh, we can buy this bike and we'll have it as like a commuter bike. That doesn't make any sense. Um, it is very cool though, but this is definitely more of like an old guy's bike for sure. Like mm -hmm. your dad and that generation, this is the bike that when they were younger, this was like the hottest thing on the block, you know? And this thing still looks pretty good, man. This thing is in really good shape, really clean paint on this, really good. Um, you know, you ride this bike around, you ride it to school, right? Or you used to before you graduated, yeah. did a couple times. What do you like about it? It's, it's, power, it's super smooth, like the power delivery, because I'm used to my R6 in CMRA in club racing. And that bike is just nothing, nothing, and then everything all at once. And this is just super smooth, it's friendly, it makes a good amount of power, it's fun, yeah. Yeah, so it's working with a 60 degree V twin, uh, about a thousand cc's because this was a homologated super bike back in the day. You'll see the world championship livery on here, Troy Curse's name uh, emblazoned on this motorcycle, a little world championship 2001 sticker because Aprilia was racing back in the day. And the twin cylinder bikes in the early 2000s for super bike was the class to beat. You had stuff like the RC51, the old Ducatis, these Aprilias, all twin cylinder bikes doing the Lord's work out in super bike making what a buck 35 horsepower around there this bike's a little different because it's bored out so Ooh. technically this it should be a 1000 cc look at cool but i think it's an 1100 from the guy we bought this from he had this melee and then he had another one that was the colin edwards livery so the dude was like the the aprilia connoisseur and he has <laughs> all of his fancy bikes in there it was pretty cool so 1100 cc's roughly <laughs> Uh, so this to me starts to kind of feel a little Ducati 1098, um, you know, a bigger V twin, uh, something that just produces a delicious low end amount of torque. Yeah. These bikes actually, you know, we were joking about it being silly, but nowadays this type of bike actually works really well as a street bike because mm -hmm. of how linear the power delivery is, because of the torque that you have. And I don't think the ergonomics are that punishing on this thing. It's not super aggressive. It's not that bad. Yeah. And I just love the exaggerated butt shelf over here yeah. with the pad, because you're like, you're gonna need that whenever you're getting on it, <laughs> yeah. trying to fly off the bike or whatever. Uh, I'm gonna swing a leg over it really quick and just kind of see how it feels. Um, what's the wet weight on this? It's about maybe 425 pounds, something like that. I'm gonna call it 420, folks. Yeah. Because obviously. I was gonna make that joke. Yeah, <laughs> I beat you to it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, all the controls feel a little bit dated, I'm not gonna lie, but that's okay, it's a 20-year-old motorcycle. I think the most dated thing on this bike actually are the brakes. Uh, we have actually mounted Brembo's down there, which you would never see on a superbike nope. nowadays. You would never see it. And you were telling me that the brakes do leave a little bit to be desired on this bike, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, maybe a little bit too powerful for how fast it can actually stop. Uh, an Olin's fork, which is really cool. Uh, so you're able to adjust everything um, that you need to for rebound, compression, preload up at the front. It still has the classic blue capped Olin's yeah, that I, I really yeah, love that yeah, look. Yeah, you look down, yeah. Yeah, it's, this is just like my Daytona. I just love the, the blue capped Olin's. Uh, Olin's steering damper. The look out of the cockpit's really cool, man. The, the analog tack right there in the middle. Mm -hmm. Um, this is a really sweet bike. You have the best mod right here, the Yamini Brake Reservoir cover, yeah. of course. Five horsepower. Yeah. Five horsepower right there. Any weirdness you've had with this bike? Um, 
every once in a while the battery will not charge itself so if you turn mm. the bike on and off too many times without riding it for long enough it will reset uh the controls and it will reset the rev limiter to 6,000 rpm which is really annoying and it'll reset it to kilometers an hour and i know how to change all that because it's happened like 20 times but uh other than that it's the bike's good and you know it's pretty good yeah you have i think 15,000 miles on it something like yeah. that 15,500 miles on the clock on this thing. It's pretty good. So that's pretty good right there. Really not too bad. Um, for a 20 plus year old motorcycle, that's actually really not many miles at all. That's less than a thousand miles a year. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty cool. Nico, anything else I should know before I take off with it and go take it on a little bit of a ride around town? Not really, you got, you got most of it, it's good. Now, before I take this bike out for a spin, you got to know that Eurocycle is our preferred dealer partner here on Yami Noob. We love working with them because you could get something like this straight delivered to your door. Now, these motorcycles are hard to come by. RSV Mille in this clean of a condition is not something you're going to find all the time, but Eurocycle, as the name implies, deals specially with motorcycles like this. If you want a brand new Ducati, Triumph, BMW, Royal Enfield, any other bikes like that, or you want a classic piece of Italian engineering like this RSV Mille, hit that link down below and find your next European motorcycle with RideEurocycle.com. Now, with all that being said, let's get this bike out on the road. Let's see how it feels. All right, folks. Taking off with the Aprilia RSV Mille here. Mille R. Slightly bored out. This is a cool bike, man. Ooh, foot pegs are nice and high. Throttle could use a little bit of lubrication. Just a little bit of a tired motorcycle. This bike really doesn't have that many miles on it. I think we're sitting at around 15,000 miles. It's actually not too bad. It really stands out though, man. It's got a great look to it. This banana yellow color scheme. Olin steering damper. It's cool. It's really cool. I do think these bikes, unfortunately, do suffer from a little bit of the, the reliability memes, you know? That can happen with the old Italian motorcycles. Oh yeah, it's analog, it's raw. It's got a lot of engine braking because it's such a big engine. 1000 cc twin bored out a little bit makes a good amount of power though actually mounted calipers at the front this is not you know top end radial mounted uh brembos like you'd see on a modern super bike or something like that this is definitely more old school and i do feel like the stopping power is definitely not up to the task of what this bike's acceleration provides and that's something that was pretty common with older bikes you know we'll see here as i come to a stop at this red light you can absolutely get it stopped i'm not saying this bike has no brakes but it's the type of thing where if you had better feel through the lever and better feel of the caliper uh yeah you'd be better see it's actually pulled here it's, it should be pushing down here and pinching a, a more normal brake caliper see if we can find neutral Oh, first try on the Aprilia for neutral. That is impressive. <laughs> Idles beautifully, honestly. It's a fuel-injected motorcycle. It's not carbureted, but it feels fantastic, even for a kind of first-gen carburetor, or excuse me, first-gen uh, fuel injection system. It's really nice. Yeah, on-off throttle is a little, a little finicky for me. Uh, that could just be due to the fact that this bike needs uh, you know, maybe a little bit of maintenance for the throttle tube to be a little bit more smooth and engaging. But on this, uh, on this beefy frame, this bike feels great, man. Side to side here, change of direction. It's nimble. It's really, uh, it's really thin because it's a V-twin. It's really, really cool. If I remember correctly, they've really used this motor in quite a few different motorcycles back in the day. Uh, this big 1,000cc twin. Before they went to the V4, I believe in 2009 is when the RSV4 came out and the new concept for that. So, yeah, so this was kind of the flagship model for a long time. So being behind this work truck, I can definitely tell it's got the, 
the big fast bike energy because you feel like you're going slow all the time with it. You're like, I just want to romp on it and get on this thing, you know? All right, folks, we are going to get the Aprilia out on the twisties, out on the highway, and keep enjoying this motorcycle. Stay tuned. All right, we got a little bit of open road here. You can feel out the Miele's power a little bit. Yeah, it's no slouch. These twin cylinder bikes are really such a sweet spot, you know? I think that's why I like the new RS660 so much, because it's kind of a modern interpretation of these old, big displacement twin cylinder bikes. And we like to think, you know, oh, four cylinder Japanese sport bikes are the pinnacle. So many great V-twin sport bikes have been made, not only by Italy, but also by Japan. The RC51, uh, this Miele here, all the Ducatis, the 848, the Panigales, the older ones, the 1299s, the 1199s. I mean, for God's sakes, the 1098, which was an absolute revelation when I first rode it. These twin cylinder bikes from the late 2000s, early 2000s, that, that kind of era, uh, they're really special. And we've come so far in the last 10 years or so with motorcycling, we kind of forgot where we were not that long ago. And these bikes are genuinely very enjoyable to ride. The riding experience here is super analog, super involved. All the controls feel like they're actuating real mechanical levers and you're really actually doing something. But it's not so old that you're gonna worry about it just you know, breaking down all the time and having weird issues. Even though it is a 23 year old Aprilia, this bike is actually older than Nico, who owns it, uh, by a good five years or so, which is funny. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny for me thinking that this was the type of bike that was popular during my childhood, during the early 2000s. Um, it's just super cool. And you just, you don't really have many things like this nowadays. And like I said, you know, the RS660 is Aprilia's like, kind of new take on something like this. A usable, fun sport bike that is good to ride in a lot of conditions and not super race bike, super punishing, ultimately fast, you know? But back in the day, this was a fast bike. 135 horsepower, 70 something foot pounds of torque. I mean, this was a super bike and it still feels fast today. Uh, does it have mind bending amounts of speed like a V4R or an RSV4? No, it doesn't. But I mean, it still gets up and boogies pretty damn good. It's a lot of fun to ride. Actually, we'll hang a right here. Yeah, you can really boogie. But the thing about it that's crazy is uh, the brakes are really... I mean, maybe Nico's got to do a bit of a fluid flush, maybe a pad change, because I really feel I'm compromised by the braking forces on this bike. Hit the brakes right here, actually. Got this Honda Civic coming out. Always keep your eyes up, folks. Always keep your eyes up. Flip around the U-turn here. No slipper clutch on this machine. You gotta bang down gears the old fashioned way. You gotta know what you're doing. You gotta know how to ride this thing. Bank a quick U-turn. Easy peasy. Back on the gas here. <laughs> yeah, it's not slow, man. That's awesome. That's fun. It's the type of bike where you can ride it at four or five tenths and it still feels really nice. It's really rewarding. It's got a juicy spread of power. That's how I would describe it. Just juicy, man. Really nice, broad, broad range of power and once you start to get used to the controls how they're all a little bit heavier a little bit more thought required you have to move a little bit slower with everything you know you can't jab on the throttle jab on the brakes more so than modern bikes you have to really you know be precise with your movements on this thing and really work with the bike you know I don't really feel like I can just do whatever and it's gonna take care of me it's like, no, 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 we got to ride this correctly, you know? As we come up here to this red light, we'll test the brakes out a little bit more. You 
get a little squirm out of the rear because we don't have a slipper clutch blipping up the throttle you have to get everything right that's what's really cool about riding this thing is it rewards proper riding precision accuracy and boy this v-twin is just it's really nice take off here expecting a bit higher of a rev ceiling forgot that I'm on a twin I've only got about 10,000 rpm but it doesn't really matter what gear you're in because you have such a broad spread of power you can be in fourth or fifth gear and you roll on and you got that torque it really moves you forward I could use a set of tank grips on this thing. The paint is so slick and smooth that uh, I, I find myself sliding around on this thing a little bit. Uh, that's a small owner mod that I would do to it if it were my bike, along with upgrading those brakes. And maybe an, I, if it were my bike, I would maybe swap in uh, a new fork just so I could get radial calipers, get a new master cylinder, just because the, the braking does leave a little bit to be desired on this thing. Entering our twisty section here, we're going to take it nice and easy with the Aprilia RSV Miele. You know, side to side is not as nimble as a modern sport bike. And that's to be expected, you know. These bikes, they steer a little bit slower. The chassis isn't quite as stiff. You can tell we've made many refinements, many improvements to motorcycle stability in the last 20 years, particularly in frame design. The suspension components, like, these are still good, you know? This Olin's fork, still doing a great job keeping everything in check, keeping bumps compliant, you know? That's, that's the job of the suspension. Um, but the frame is really where the handling starts to become apparent on a motorcycle because uh, laterally like this, you know, the suspension can't work as well, you know? That the, the handling is not in the suspension. The suspension is there merely to just help with bumps and absorb things and rebound in the proper way. Um, the frame and the geometry of the bike really is the key to handling. You have a sharper brake, you're gonna turn in faster, you got a frame that's very rigid laterally, swing arm pivot points. There's so many small details on a motorcycle that inform the way it handles more than suspension. It's why you can't throw a set of you know, Olin's on your Ninja 400 and expect it to handle like a ZX-10. It's just totally different. The crank is different. Everything about it is different. And I gotta say, the Aprilia here, for its age, does very, very well. It's not a bike that you want to push super hard, which is interesting. Um, given that it's got this big wallop of torque everywhere, as a street bike, it really invites you to ride it a little bit more lazy, you know? You kind of want to just cruise with this thing and maybe that's because our understanding of sport bikes has evolved so much but I don't know I really don't feel like I want to push the envelope with this, with this thing I feel like I just want to enjoy it for the beautiful classic motorcycle that it is um, and maybe that's just me getting older and wiser too but I, I just have such a strong appreciation for this bike and I don't really feel like you know it warrants trying to really push the pace on it. It feels so good even cruising here behind this uh, random sedan. Um, you know, I'm just feeling the torque on this engine. It's got broad linear power everywhere. It's super nice to be able to just be on this thing and take a look down at the dash. This awesome analog old school dash. Got the two LCD screens and uh, just a big sweeping analog tack in the middle. I love seeing that. And yeah, overall, like it's it's just a beautiful experience on the twisties and on a gorgeous Austin morning like this, is there anything better, you know? Such a nice experience. Just sounds so rich, so tasty. All right, we're gonna go up here and flip around try to get a run with a little bit more pace because that was a teensy bit slow for my liking. <laughs> All right, let's have a little fun with the melee, shall we? Yeah, 
one off throttle. In fact, it's a real wallop. Big wallop of torque. It's agile though. It still does the business. A lot of engine braking. You know, it's it's the type of bike where you might not even need to use the brakes that much because it engine brakes so much. Although I highly recommend you guys trail brake, of course, you know me. If you grab a gear up and be a little lazy with it, power us up the hill using all that torque. You get, you get some movement out of this bike though. It's just older, so it just does things that are a little funky, you know? <laughs> like, you get on the brakes and it kind of shimmies a little bit, and you're like, oh, why did it do that? And then you don't get a downshift perfectly, and you're like, oh, why did it do that? I'm gonna keep it in third gear here. Let it just settle into that groove. It winds out really beautifully. very similar to a Ducati twin of the time. You're missing some of the classic Ducati noises. It is an Aprilia, but I don't know. I think it's all the better for that <laughs> in some ways. I don't have a ton of confidence in the front end. I'm not going to lie. And that might be just due to the fact that it's an older bike. But yeah, it just feels like I can't get the front end to talk to me as much as I'd like. And it also feels like when I'm on the power, it just kind of, it kind of shakes the whole bike a little bit around. But it still handles beautifully though, for an old girl. Still really enjoyable. 23 years old, still out on the road, still looking beautiful. We owe it to ourselves to take care of bikes like this, man. We really do. We really need to owe it to ourselves to take care of these bikes and to show the world that you don't need the latest and greatest leader bike to have a really nice time on a motorcycle. Because this motorcycle sounds like this. And that's just nice, you know? Alrighty, folks, we're gonna get the bike now on uh, faster roads because I do want to experience it at speed. Tell you a little bit more about the power characteristics of this machine and then we'll uh, wrap up this video, shall we? Okay, we're gonna get a little little launch and pull here from the melee. Let's see how she does. We're just gonna roll out of it. Nice, man. <laughs> Reminds me a lot of the 1098, honestly. I really feel like I'm back on that bike because I got the yellow and the twin cylinder sound. It's not as viciously fast as the 1098, but honestly, it's pretty close. This one is bored out a little bit, so it's, it's pretty much the same displacement as the 1098. Yeah, that's nice. All right, everybody, wrapping my thoughts here on the Aprilia RSV Mille. This is a really cool bike, man. Uh, it really gives me a lot of that Ducati 1098 energy. I really think that if you're not familiar with this early 2000s twin cylinder superbike category, uh, there's a lot to love here. As a street bike, the amount of low end grunt and torque that you have is just really nice, you know? You can be in fourth, fifth, or even sixth gear on this thing and just kind of cruise on the power and you just really get moving really, really nice. You don't have this kind of peaky power band that you would in a traditional sport bike. Um, a couple things I noticed on this machine, obviously the brakes do leave a little bit to be desired as I mentioned on the vlog. Um, you have to be patient with this bike. It's not the type of bike where you can flick it in and get aggressive with it. You know, it demands you to kind of ride it a little bit more smoothly, a little bit more carefully. Um, and that's kind of how you saw the style of those guys riding back in the day, even on the racetrack. They were smooth, they were controlled, a little bit more upright. You know, it's not a bike that you can get a lot of short and get aggressive with. It's a motorcycle that you really want to take your time with. And honestly, these types of motorcycles now, being 20 plus years old, they're classics, they're relics. You want to ride them and enjoy them in a more demure kind of way. You don't really want to go out there and just get after and just rip on this thing like crazy. I'm sure guys back in the day were doing that because this was the epitome of performance. But nowadays, I mean, 
I'm pretty sure a 600 class bike could beat this thing, but I still loved riding it. You know, it handles beautifully. Uh, it just feels a little bit dated, but you gotta love that classic sound and smell of this motorcycle too. One thing I noticed, you just smell that unburnt fuel coming out the end of the exhaust and just kind of the vibe of this bike. It doesn't run too hot either, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I really enjoy this motorcycle. Thanks again to Nico for letting me ride and enjoy it today and kind of showing the people out there on the internet that you don't have to get the latest and greatest motorcycle. Sometimes there are some hidden gems from the early 2000s that are still just as good as new. Thank you so much to Eurocycle for supporting today's video. Let me know what you guys thought about today's ride and review on this Aprilia RSV Mille. We'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later. Brother, only one thing to say to you today. While we sit here, taking a knee, it's a special moment, me and you hanging out here, do it. I don't even gotta tell you what to do. You already know what to do. You've made it to the end of the video. You got the time. I know you're sitting there. You wanna make sure that you can keep watching yourself some Miami Noob. So what you wanna do, just click that video right over here. Do it.